In this section, we'll talk about the structure of nephron. We have seen the two types of nephrons based on their position. Cortical nephrons and juxtamedullary nephron. So, we are talking about the one which is uh, the most common one in our kidneys. That is cortical nephron. And whether it is cortical nephron or juxtamedullary, the parts remain the same. There is only one difference. That is the length of the loop of Henle plus their location. So basically both the nephrons have the same structure. So the first part is Bowman's capsule. Now we will take up all individual parts and keep discussing their detail uh, structure and then we will uh, maybe we will draw the structure first and then take all the parts. So a typical nephron would have a cup like structure which is known as the Bowman's capsule. The details we'll take a little later. This cup-like part is Bowman's capsule. This Bowman's capsule leads into a coiled tube which is known as the proximal convoluted tubule and this much part it remains in the cortex. Then this tube becomes long, gets into a loop like structure and this loop is in the medulla region. So this is medulla, this part is the cortex part. The loop, as there are two arms in the loop, one arm is going down and then there is other arm which is coming up. And this arm which is moving up is actually slightly thicker or wider. So let us label this. This part is PCT, proximal convoluted tubule. This complete is the loop of Henry. This arm in which the filtrate is going to flow down into the medulla is known as descending limb. And this is the arm in which the fluid is going to go up. That is towards the cortex again. This arm is known as ascending limb and this complete structure is the loop of Henry. This arm which has come up, it again gets narrower and it opens into again a coiled part and as this coiled part is towards the end, this was towards the beginning, so proximal. This is towards the end, so this part is known as distal convoluted tubule and this tubule then opens into a collecting duct. So this is the basic structure of a nephron. So this is a cup-like part, Bowman's capsule and then there is a tube thing. This Bowman's capsule, it receives blood through an arteriole. This arteriole is afferent arteriole. It is wider. This afferent arteriole comes into this cup-like depression and divides into a set of capillaries. There are 50 approximately capillaries and all these capillaries rejoin and the blood goes out. As you can see in the diagram, the diameter of afferent arteriole is more as compared to the one which is going out. This is efferent arteriole. And because if there is a pipe with wider diameter and a pipe with narrower diameter, so the pressure is suddenly going to increase with more force the blood is going to come here because the diameter is more. And then when it leaves out, it is a narrow tube. So the pressure builds up in this capillary network. This capillary network is known as glomerulus. And this complete thing that is the Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus together is known as 
renal corpuscle or malpighian body. We'll add those terms when we draw the detailed structure. So what all parts have there in a nephron? There is a cup-like structure which is known as Bowman's capsule in which there is a network of capillaries called glomerulus. Together this part is known as malpighian body or renal corpuscle. Then tubes. The first part of the tube is coiled. It remains in the cortex region. It is called proximal because it is the first part, convoluted because it is coiled structure and tubule because it is a tube part. Then there is a loop like structure. This is known as a hairpin type loop. There are two arms. One which is going to bring the liquid downwards. Here the liquid is going to go down. So it is known as descending limb and here the liquid is going to go up. So this is ascending limb. And this loop is loop of Henley. Then comes the last part of the tube which is again a coiled part. This is called distal convoluted tubule and it opens into the collecting duct. Now we will take up all these parts in detail and see what structure exactly they exhibit. So we will start with Bowman's capsule. Or let us write Malpighian body here. Malpighian body, which is also known as renal corpuscle. Let me shift this label here so that we get more space. So this is the collecting duct. Now we are drawing two things together, that is Bowman's capsule as well as the glomerulus which is inside. So let me draw this Bowman's capsule first. It is a cup shaped structure. And this has double wall. This is known as the inner wall towards glomerulus and this is known as the outer wall. The inner membrane or inner wall is known as visceral wall and the outer one is known as parietal wall. So these are two. Now there is a difference in the cells which make up these layers. The visceral wall is made up of podocytes. It is made up of podocytes. Podocytes are given this term because they have leg-like or pseudopodia-like structures. So we are drawing those cells here. So let us draw this podocyte. This is one cell and these are the leg-like structures. So let me erase this wall and replace it with only these podocytes. So this is another podocyte and these are the leg-like structures. In between these podocytes are present some slits. So we will draw that gap also. Say here is one more podocyte and these are the slit-like structure, oh sorry, the pseudopodia-like structure and here is a gap. So let me make all podocytes here and we are showing these gaps in between which are actually the slit pores. So again podocytes, finger like structures and let us draw one more and podocyte. So this is the inner layer which is made up of podocytes. So this cell is the podocyte and in between these cells the slit-like structures which are present, they are known as the slit pores. That means this membrane has perforations or openings because from here, filtration is going to take place. Now, the other cells which are especially in the outer wall. And remember, this wall, visceral, is known as inner. Inner means the one which is towards glomerulus. The other cells which are present, they are simple squamous cells. Squamous cells are flat. So let us draw all these flat cells. And 
and these flat cells are up till the base. After this, we will have this next tube part that is the proximal convoluted tube. Here the cells are going to be different. So let us make these squamous epithelial cells here. So there are two distinct layers. The inner one which is visceral has special type of cells, the podocytes. And the outer wall has squamous epithelia. So it is made up of squamous epithelium, the outer one. And this cavity is the space and this space is going to continue with the space or the lumen which is going to be inside the tube. Now, podocytes are with the slits and they have these finger-like structures or pseudopodia-like structures. If I make one podocyte here, the podocyte is something like this. This is how the podocyte looks and that is why the name given to it, podo is or podium is something which is foot-like. So there are projections. So Bowman's capsule has two distinct layers. It is a double walled structure, cup-like structure. Inner, that is visceral membrane, is made up of podocytes and the outer membrane is made up of simple squamous epithelium. This Bowman's capsule is going to receive the blood. The blood which comes here comes through the afferent arteriole. So here there is an arteriole which is going to come into this cup-like structure. This arteriole divides into a set of capillaries. There are about 50 capillaries here in this cluster and all these capillaries they would rejoin to form a tube or an arteriole which is going to take the blood out. So from here the blood enters and from here it leaves. This arteriole is known as afferent arteriole and the one from where the blood is going to leave is efferent arteriole. And this cluster of capillaries is known as glomerulus. And glomerulus has about 50 capillaries. So it is a tuft, a bunch of capillaries. So now the filtration is going to take place. The blood is going to come here and these walls of capillaries, we'll talk about the filtration membrane also. Here, the blood gets filtered and then there are podocytes. Podocytes, in between podocytes, there are slit pores. So the filtration is going to take place here. This is the membrane where the filtration takes place. We'll draw one more layer. Between the capillary wall and the podocyte, there is present basement membrane. So this dotted green line which we have drawn here is actually basement membrane. Basement membrane. So now we have understood the structure of the Malpighian body. What all things are there in the Malpighian body? There is Bowman's capsule and glomerulus. So Malpighian body basically or this renal corpuscle, it comprises of two things. It is Bowman's capsule plus glomerulus. Two things together are known as the Malpighian body or renal corpuscle. Now, in the next part, we'll talk about the filtration membrane. We'll see the structure even more in detail and see how this filtration of the plasma part which is going to take place here and the fluid will be formed here. We'll start calling that fluid nephric filtrate but we want to see the membrane through which this filtration is going to take place. So we'll talk about the detailed structure and after that we'll be able to understand why this filtration which is taking place here is known as ultrafiltration. So that we will take up in the next segment.